Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 25th episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. I'm your host, David, and I'm joined today by my big bootied co-host, Robert with the boot. There he is. <laughs> uh, today's episode is about boundaries, your yeses, your noes, and how this knowledge helps you flourish. We're joined today by our special guest, Rachel Kent. Yay. Welcome, Rachel. Hello. Good morning, or whatever day, time of day it is right now. <laughs> yeah. Evening for me. Whatever time it, it is for the, the, right? Oh, God. Oh, let's not get into time. <laughs> oh, God. It is <laughs> oh, time. so relative. <laughs> um. Rachel is currently doing the Geek Enders Neverland show at the Surrey Bear Creek. Is that the location? What yeah, is the Surrey Bear uh, Creek? Okay. Yeah, Bear Creek Garden. Bear park. Creek. Cool. Is it the garden yeah, or the park? Bear is there park. a park? Yeah, Bear park. Creek Park. Yeah. That's, a, that's a garden. Bear like, is there a garden park. in the park? Yeah. <laughs> there is a garden in the park, actually. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of things in the park. It's a very large park. <laughs> um, can you say any more about what that show is, Rachel? Uh, so it is a family friendly, uh, immersive. Uh, circus. So basically it's like, it's a one way track that you kind of like walk through and we have start times like every 15 minutes between uh, times. So, uh, and groups are no longer larger than 12 and you're always six feet away from the other performers, which is very fun and COVID safe. Uh, but basically, yeah, it's just like a Peter Pan sort of themed circus that you get to roam around. There's going to be sword fighting. There's going to be acrobatics. There's going to be dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to see me confusingly gendered as Captain Hook. And oh, hopefully yes. fuel for all of your uh, uh, pansexual awakenings. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a crocodile with you? We do have a crocodile. I don't play a crocodile. I believe okay. somebody who does aerial hoops is the crocodile. Mm. We have and a it, few. And it doesn't end there too, right? Like even post um, that, you're, the, post the Bear Creek Park, it's gonna you're going to do that same show later? Yeah, and then we're doing it back again at the Vancouver Fringe, which is, knock on wood, if everybody stops coughing on each other, um, is going to go on, which will be uh, September, I believe, the 11th to the 17th. Okay, so wow, awesome. September uh, on Granville Island. So location specifics are still coming, but if you just go to the Vancouver Fringe website, they should have all the details there soon. Beautiful. And can I ask, are you doing a circus act or are you doing something else? I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing audience training. So I'm nice. the first person you see. I'm kind of like, uh, you know, like I'm the pirate that like introduces you to the show. And then also yes. is there if you have any questions, concerns during the process of the show. Um, if you're just like, I am scared, please help <laughs> me. Or it's like, I, <laughs> hold, hold on. I am when having an allergic scared, reaction. Please they're supposed to go me. to Captain Hook when they're scared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, awesome. I'm going to be very charming, though. Like, people are going to be like, mm, I think I just, I don't want to see the circus. I just want to hang out with this bitch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and she's the primer. She's like that thing you go to at, like, Costco, right? She's the one who has the cheese you try before actually getting the cheese. And you just keep going yeah. back to the free girl. Yeah. <laughs> like why would i buy a whole i don't need 25 pounds of this i just need right. like just a i want a plate a couple of cubes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome um if you want you can follow rachel at rach kent on instagram was it yes okay yeah and that's r-a-y-c-h dot kent uh and before we continue Reminder to listeners, there's a video of the podcast on YouTube and there uh, to people who are watching, there's audio of the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. So, Rachel, to uh, help the audience get to know you, we're going to do our rapid fire questions. So the goal here is to just answer uh, the first thing that comes to your mind. Yes or no, either or try not to think about it. Okay. And then uh, we will hopefully all learn a little something. Maybe you'll even learn something about yourself. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and we usually go until a story comes up is usually what happens. All right. Alrighty. Are you ready, Robert? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Ready, Rachel? I'm ready. What made you smile today? Uh, getting a message from my significant other this morning. Mm. What's the weirdest food you've eaten? Uh, I've eaten guinea pig. Oh, <laughs> you had some quee. <laughs> Did yeah. you have it in in South America? Uh, yeah, in Peru. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, country or city? Ooh, I want to say city, but with access to the country. Mm. Sweet or savory? Ooh, sweets. Cats or dogs? Mm. Ugh. Cats. Mm -hmm. You had to I sing. Like you, oh, 
What? I like dogs, but uh, cats uh, don't mm. bark. Yeah, this is a very cut and dry thing. It's one or the other. <laughs> You're at karaoke. You have one song to sing. What is it? Uh, Pour Some Sugar On Me by Def Leppard. Mm. When are you most likely to be fake? Uh, when doing customer service to middle-aged white women. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, speaking of jobs, if you weren't doing what you're currently doing with your life and you could have any job, what would it be? Ooh, um, probably running like a small town cafe, mm. um, like someplace that like serves brunch or something and has like, it's like people like come like drive there on purpose just for the desserts. Yes. Yeah. On that note, uh, vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate, hundred percent. Uh, drama or comedy? Ooh, I like dramedies, mm. like comedies, but that like ones that like punch you in the stomach before they let you go, and you're just like, I thought this was <laughs> supposed to be funny. <laughs> Would you prefer to DJ a whole night or dance a whole night? Oh, dance. Driver or passenger? Depends on the road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a sex thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, that does, is... can, like, as a bisexual, that, do, that is canon, I guess. Depends on the road, yeah. feeling, the of the moon. What have you been reading, listening, watching lately? Uh, watching, I've been watching Steven Universe with my roommate. Mm. Uh, highly recommend children's animated show, but it's incredible. It deals with trauma, and I'm, like, getting gut punched, like, every 10 episodes with feelings um reading uh, i'm currently reading uh watership down oh, and gosh, i've never read it before and i also just finished the audiobook um amanda palmer's the art of asking oh um, which Ooh. is really interesting topical yeah. speaking of celebrities have you ever asked for an autograph if so who uh no i have never had i've never had the guts to ask somebody for an autograph because usually I just feel like celebrities just want to be able to live their lives and not be bothered so I usually just try to let them be mm. so no comic con if... or anything no and, and are you kidding me I don't have $75 to pay for someone to write on some of my shit <laughs> good point good point mm -mm. Uh, what's something you have no patience for uh, no patience um like Willful ignorance. Mm, just like if you're yes. just like purposefully mm. just not educating yourself, I'm just like, we ha we literally have computers in our pocket. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to, yeah. you know, read a single article on a differing opinion. So and true. What's a self care thing you do for yourself? Um, I get my eyebrows done. Mm. Weird, but it's just like I have I have a strong brow for those who are watching on the YouTube channel. You can like, <laughs> I have I tell them to give me the Disney villain arch. Ooh, mm. it looks so good on you. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it's like the one thing that like even when like all of my like currently I'm unemployed, semi unemployed because I'm like trying to pursue that actor dream. Mm. And but it's like the one thing that I like always make sure that I do is I just get my eyebrows done because uh it just looks nicer and it just makes me feel good. And it's like a nice thing that just keeps this beautiful visage <laughs> looking at shapely, intimidating self. <laughs> That's great. Um, we'll stop there. Robert, what did you learn about Rachel this time around? Um, what did I learn about Rachel? Uh, I, it was interesting that uh, the countryside thing, it's like, I I think this is alludes to what Rachel has said, how like being a bisexual person, you know, sometimes you're like a little bit of both and sometimes it's just like very mood dependent. And it's the thing that I find about Rachel is like, just when I think I know her, she pulls something out of like left field. Like it wasn't until she like, cause we lived together for a short while and the fucking food she made, I had no idea she was such a good cook, but she like, she had like, I'd seen things on social media but then i'd like tried it i was like oh my god she's so good and i was just like i didn't you know it's, like, it's you constantly surprise me so yeah thank you yeah it's one of the uh -huh. things it's like i kind of like i like the idea of cooking but it's one of the reasons i've always worked in restaurants just in like the front end of things is that um, i'm worried that if i turn to like cooking for a living that i would hate cooking and i love yeah. it so much that i never want that to be the case yeah. so so now i'm just what? dating a chef instead <laughs> oh i can just live vicariously through them and then now, judge all their cooking is it 
common for chefs to also not really like cooking at home? How has that yeah. played out? Yeah, absolutely. It's because, well, you're usually at restaurants for long periods. It's like, it's the same thing for servers as well. It's like you're at restaurants for long periods of time. So usually you're getting fed at work. And like when cooking is your job, you're usually exhausted by the time you get home. And when you come home, you don't want to be like looking at a fridge and be like, okay, and now I have to do my job again for myself. Yeah. Like you yeah. just, you just have no energy for that. Mm -hmm. um, or it's, it's a lot of times you end up just like bringing home leftovers from work or like bringing home leftovers from an event or mm -hmm. so a lot of the food that you're eating is still restaurant food because it's just like, it's just easier just to do that. than it's because like, people don't, I think fully appreciate just how physically taxing yeah. the food service industry is unless you've mm -hmm. done it for a long time. And especially compared to for those who work in kitchens, because it's like, it's not only being on your feet, it's hot and it's, you know, your rent ovens and dishes and, Mm -hmm. it's, it's taxing and yeah moving the last thing boxes you want to do is moving big old cans big old mm -hmm. hunks of meat it's like the it dough. really is a workout God, i worked the in dough. a pizza place those dough balls are freaking massive and you have to <laughs> mm -hmm. like throw it all into the big hopper and mix it up and then pull it out and it's just weighty yeah, yeah but you get Damn. great guns by the end of it you like do. every chef you i know do. has like the meatiest forearms i've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life yeah i want them to pound me as much as they do that dough <laughs> <laughs> have you said there's something like like watching like any person that has like those big meaty forearms and they're like doing work with their arms and you're like watching all the like sinews in their arms oh, yeah. like, yeah. uh Rachel, this is a pg hands? show uh, <laughs> it is sweating. not a pg show <laughs> even remotely <laughs> Um, yeah, it's so funny. I feel like I'm still waking up uh, as well. So I'm like, am I ready to get raunchy? But like, that's the show, baby. <laughs> the second she said sinews, I was suddenly turned on. Like, All right. Yeah. We're going yeah. to sex time. I no. am rising currently much like uh, the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job. My I'm, yeast. Mm, my yeast. <laughs> my yeast is increasing. Mm. You can tell that it's working because of all the foam at the top. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, I learned through this rapid fire, I learned that Rachel is bi. I mean, I could have assumed because you were in queer prov with us. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I didn't talk about this in the last episode, but we alluded to it. I've been discovering my own bi curiosity lately, mm -hmm. which has been really like... Uh, uh emotional <laughs> in like a weird way because like you know not to overshare or like take focus from our subject but it's like um yeah i realized i realized there was a big part of me that was like just setting up a fear of women um and like even though i was having a lot of women as my friends it was still like this thing of like oh i could never be sexual with a woman or like a feminine energy and i was just like but why david uh, mm -hmm. And then I like went on a date uh, with a girl and like it went really well. And like I started just like feeling many things and I was just like, whoa, oh, learning about <laughs> oneself like in later 20s. I mean, learning through life, like all of that. Yeah, it was a very it was a very powerful experience. I don't know if that <laughs> is relatable at all. To That's your totally relatable. Um, mm. That being said, like women are terrifying. It's no wonder that you were afraid to date with them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Horrifying, intimidating creatures. <laughs> that you just wallow in the fear of like it's just like Rachel why have you dated so many like cis men and it's like because mm. have you seen women have you seen them <laughs> <They're intimidating. laughs> these, these like voluptuous creatures of just like pure moon energy mm -hmm. just like and you're just like and you want and like especially as like somebody who's a woman themselves mm -hmm. um you just like you have such high standards for like I recognize like how high my standards are for like my partners and like wanting mm. to give that to somebody else mm. and just being like I'm not good enough for you like I will mm. never the be. number of Fabios that Rachel has dated is just <laughs> <laughs> nuts uh, but like yeah but it, it brings it kind of like it kind of brings us to the topic I think of today which is boundaries mm -hmm. is the the idea of like I think as you sort of settle more into yourself as a person, you realize that there are some boundaries about yourself that you start to question and stretch a little bit. And I think some of that does come to your sexuality, but I've noticed a lot of, like there are some people who know that about themselves, like right when they're like in their teen years and others that like don't really know it about themselves, like in relation to sex or their gender until they're like in their twenties or thirties. Cause they just have to oh, get yeah. comfortable enough and settled enough within themselves before they can start kind of pushing being like, but what if, you know, what if I tried this or like, have, would, would I be in a relationship with somebody mm -hmm. who's the same gender representation as me? Mm -hmm. 
Well, and yeah. I think mm-hmm. I think part of the fear might not even necessarily be of a specific gender. Like I think some people get so confused about their sexual orientation mm-hmm. that they actually just avoid sex, right? And avoid mm-hmm. like sexual encounters. And so for some people it's like they didn't even have a chance to like explore one side of the spectrum, let alone the other. Or that maybe they started on one end and didn't do the other because they were just like, I'm just scared of anything outside of this spectrum, or mm-hmm. I'm scared of the whole spectrum. And, uh, you know, like for myself, I started with women for a long time and I dated several, but every single time it got to a sexual part, then I was just like, eh, and I started backing up and gotten weird about it. So I had, I had my period of dating women and just never worked mm. for me. Yeah. Mm. That's fair. And I feel like you touched on something really important as well. Rachel is like, I don't know, something I've been thinking about a lot is in in many ways an amount of fear or like an amount of like respect or like holding somebody up in your mind is healthy right like you want to be able to like look up to the person that you're intimate with in in like in many ways um and then at the same time like that can totally teeter over into uh you know, really like difficult feelings where it's just like, ah, shit, like I'm, I feel totally unsettled or I feel totally unworthy of whatever's going on here, which is like, that's the realm of therapy. Like that's so hard when we start getting into situations like that, but it does provoke a lot of like questioning of like, oh, why, like, what is it about this person that is triggering so much like insecurity in me? Like, how do I deal with that? And for me, it was very like, concrete stuff i was like well i need like a more comfortable living situation i need to like be employed um i need like my basic needs taken care of uh before i start getting like really serious with someone um but then there's like then there's weird stuff there's real weird stuff that comes up when it comes to insecurity yeah he has this weird requirement that the person he dates wears a like uh the mushroom outfit for for from nintendo no the- <laughs> <laughs> What's the guy named Toad? Toad? Yeah. yeah. He's totally got to be Toad. She's like, I have to be Mario. I will not take any questions about it. <laughs> um, so let's get I'm into sorry, It's like there's a comic I saw once that was like, My princess is in another castle. And Mario's like, Who said I was looking for the princess? And, like, <laughs> and Mario's like, ah. And it's like this, the two of them just like aggressively making out at the end of the <laughs> fire level. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I didn't think we were going to bring my fetish onto the podcast today. Uh oh. <laughs> um, shall we get into. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get into our uh, heart of the discussion. So, today we're talking about boundaries. And our first question that I bring into the panel, I'm going to throw it to Robert. Robert, how do you know when a boundary is crossed and what can you do to correct that? Yeah, when I saw this question, I wanted it to be a more complicated answer, but Mm -hmm. I honestly think like, you know, maybe it's the the simplest answer is usually the right one. And it might be the case here is just you have to talk about it, like come forward with it and talk about Mm -hmm. it. And there's certain boundary crossing that probably might not work in the moment, just depending on the circumstance of what sort of boundary was crossed. You might feel too intimidated or uncomfortable or shy or whatever the case may be. But I think ultimately it's just like you have to bring it up maybe then at a later point not too late because it's a classic like don't harbor but Mm -hmm. you know like let the person know so that they just can be aware um yeah i I mean i i want it to be more complicated than that but i think think it is (laughs) i think it's just like you gotta own up yeah that's so true how about you rachel uh in terms of knowing when a boundary is crossed um i want to say that it's like it's hard to describe, but like usually you can feel it in your gut and that it, it feels like uh, you'll get an anxious feeling or like, um, um, like you'll just like, you'll have a lot of emotions attached, like negative emotions kind of attached to like a reaction. Um, or you'll like feel very, um, whatever kind of coping mechanisms you usually have, you'll kind of revert to those. So it's like, you'll make yourself feel smaller or if like you dissociate or, you know, whatever other coping mechanisms you use, usually those are a sign that, you know, if you have, if you tend to have self-destructive behaviors or whatever sort of like negative coping mechanisms you use, if you're returning to those, it usually means like something about your boundary has been crossed. Um, and then in terms of correcting it, it's, um, it's this case of first learning to recognize what it is that caused your boundary to be crossed. And then, um, then again, it's just like Robert said, it's just talking about it. It's just having to be just like, Hey, when you said this thing to me, it made me really uncomfortable. Or it's like, 
hey, when you bring up this particular subject, it makes me really uncomfortable. And um, I think it's because of X. And, um, you know, how can we how can we navigate this together? Because, you know, I don't want to feel this way. And um, it's like, but it's like very important that you're not saying that, like, I, you're not allowed to, like, make me feel this way. It's about saying that, like, these are the things I recognize about myself that make me feel uncomfortable. And so these are some solutions that I'm bringing forward to be like, you know, I'm not saying that you're never allowed to make me feel uncomfortable, but it's like, let's talk about why this is, why this makes me uncomfortable and then how we can navigate this space in a safe way that makes both of us feel yeah. protected. Yeah. I'm realizing yeah. now that I didn't address the, the first part of it around the how, and I think Rachel's really mm -hmm. right. And it's the, there's this gut feeling I know for myself, who probably has more negative coping mechanism approach, uh, is if I'm making up excuses. So if I'm allowing that to happen, like, oh, it's that one off time or this, you know, they they were had a bad day or this thing was going, you know, like, you know, it, it's been two months since this last happened or something. You're like, if I find I'm making excuses for behavior or something, then chances are it's a boundary being crossed and I should have dealt with it. And I'm not. Mm. Or it's something that like your friends notice and you're having to justify it to them. Mm. So it's something that you're like, well, no, they didn't like, and they're like, they did what to you? And you're like, yeah. oh no, they just did this. And people are like, yeah. Um, and, and you weren't upset by that. Just they always I call me stupid in front of my friends. It's funny. No, I mean, that's if totally... your laugh actually like peters off when you're mentioning it. You're like, <laughs> It's like, or it's like, no, I totally, I totally just need the extra money. So it's totally fine that my work keeps calling me on days when mm -hmm. I'm off to come in and like yeah. all these other things. Like, it's like, I, I need the extra money. So the extra money is good. Right. And so it's like, it's also the rationalizations you tell yourself that like, even though I am feeling overwhelmed or stressed out or anxious about everything that's occurring, I'm trying to intellectualize it to myself so that I can keep convincing myself that this is not something that I need to put my foot down about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Gosh. Oh, there's there's so much. So I'm going to recommend two great books. Uh, I'm going to re recommend Attached by Amr Levine. And I'm going to recommend Irritating the Ones You Love by some other guy. I'll put this the link in the one. show I notes. I haven't heard this. Can you expand on that one, David? <laughs> Irritating the Ones You Love yeah. is about the subconscious. So it's basically the whole idea with that book is uh, most of our emotional reactions are like 30% about what happened and 70% about just our shit <laughs> and like what we've always sort of been dealing with because of stuff that was established in formative experiences. And so uh, really what both of those two books conclude is you got to be direct. You got to know like what your shit is and you got to like be able to talk about it. And it's like what Rachel said, like it's okay to be uncomfortable like part of having that conversation is just going to be uncomfortable but ultimately like what we really want is to resolve our shit and mm. like the only way we do that is by like being more open about it and like you learn you know you learn more in like five minutes of effective communication with somebody than you do with denying it making excuses for them like trying to make yourself smaller to whatever fit their shape you know because like if you tell someone that a boundary has been crossed and they are not receptive to that kind of like conversation then you know that that person is probably less safe to like be close to like it kind of seems that simple or at the very least you know you can then say like oh okay well then this isn't what i thought it was um let's maybe take our relationship back like to this other place or let's mm. like what is the compromise here to make this a bit better for both of us mm. um because like yeah i mean it's everything both of you said like if all you're doing is making yourself miserable and not getting your needs met in uh your relationships in your work and whatever with people like that's uh that's exhausting and you will burn out like it will come back to haunt you you know yeah 
Mm-hmm. You you had a really great couple of statements. I feel like you summarized it really well when you were saying, like, you got to be direct, you got to be truthful. And I really want you to recreate that song. He's like, you got to be, nah, you got to be, nah, you got to oh, yeah. be together. <laughs> like, you, you need yeah. to sing a cover of that, but it's all about, like, directness and boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, let me just make a note. Uh, what's that song called? <laughs> Who's it by? Uh, it's like a 90s song. You got to be cool. You got to be, be fast. fast. You got to stick together. together. <laughs> oh damn um, it yeah we'll find it it was one of uh, those like female um and women's and songs compilation albums from the 90s uh it's yeah. desiree you gotta be desiree, desiree you gotta be you gotta be okay, bad cool. you gotta be gold you gotta be wiser you gotta be hard you gotta be tough you gotta be stronger you gotta be cool you gotta yes. be calm you gotta be together all i know all i know love will save the day Ooh-hoo. aww mm-hmm. I think it's we need so to nice. do like a trio, like a uh, remix. Like this would be amazing. <laughs> Make it about healthy communication. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, is it kind of already? We're getting off track. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next, my next question, I'll throw to Rachel. Um, so how do you set boundaries while also pushing your comfort zone and growing? Ooh, good question. Um, I think... I guess I kind of said this again in like the last question, but I think it's like there's a really big component about knowing yourself and like knowing what your boundaries are, because I think that you can't really comfortably push your, your boundaries if you don't know where your boundaries already currently lie and being really clear with yourself about where those boundaries are. Um, Like I'm going to take, um, for example, like I'm somebody I'm in recovery from binge eating disorder. And so like one of my boundaries is like, um, I love food and I love to bake, which is ironic. Um, but it's like, for example, it's like if I, I love to bake, but I can only bake if the baking is going outside of the house, because I recognize in myself that like having just baked goods, large amounts of baked goods in the home is not good for me. It's something that sets off a lot of my, um, previous negative behaviors. Um, but Um, but I'm like, I'm still pushing my comfort zone in that. I'm like, okay, I can still enjoy baking, but it's just the boundary I have set for myself is that like, if I'm going to bake, the baking has to leave the house. It has to go out to some other space where other people can enjoy it. So I still get to like grow my skills as a baker and like also be around sweets, which are kind of like one of those things that like I can never get enough of, but still, um, but still honor the fact that this is still something that I'm struggling with. And that like, um, portion control is like difficult for me with certain things. Um, but it was like learning. I had to like initially recognize that like, a, I had a problem with binge eating in the first place and B recognize that like baked goods are one of the things that, uh, for lack of a better term, trigger it. And that three, um, to navigate a way that I can still, and then once I got to a healthy place and recognizing both of those things as true, that um, how do I navigate a way that is healthy and safe for me to still be in these spaces? Mm. You know, mm. so, um, and you, I think you can do that with like a lot of things is that, um, and I think it's like open, clear communication. It's like something I've said to my roommate. It's like when we have snack foods, it's like we have a specific snack cupboard in our house that is just for my roommate snacks. And I'm like, these are your snacks. I am not allowed to eat these snacks. If I want these snacks, I have to specifically ask you for them. And I'm like, and I need you to portion them into a bowl for me mm. to like mm. help control the volume of this snack in which I consume. Mm. And, but that was like something that we were able to, that we sat down before we moved in together about a six months ago. That was like, we're both coming into this with like shit. And it's like, this is one of the things I need you to help me with because I can't do this on my own. Mm. so I think that's also a thing that's really important is that you have to be able to recognize that humans are infallible and that you are infallible and that it's okay to ask for help. And that's what setting boundaries is. It's about like saying, I know this much about myself, but I want to grow and I need you to support me in that. And that's by saying that this is a hard boundary for me and I need you to respect that. And if I decide to move outside of that boundary, I need you to do it slowly and I need you to, be willing to be patient. That is not going to something that's going to happen overnight. And I think that's like a lot of the things too, is a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm going to push my boundary. And then they're like, great, I'm going to like 
you know, I'm afraid of heights, so I'm going to go skydiving. And it's mm. like, for some people, that works great. But for other people, it's like, how about you just start by like standing like on the top of a play center? Mm-hmm. Mm. Just like, and just mm. learning where that line is for you, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and God. And it's also <laughs> learning, it's learning to sit in the discomfort too. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people are really avoid being uncomfortable. And I think a lot about like setting your boundaries and about your comfort zone is also learning where your discomfort zone is and being okay sitting in there, just being like, Ooh, like I can feel myself getting anxious and oh my God, and all this tension, but I'm not, like, I'm not dying. Like nothing's on fire. Mm-hmm. N- like n- nobody's going to jail. Okay. This mm-hmm. isn't as bad as my body has been telling me it's supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. And then like yeah, taking yeah, yeah. a breath and then being like, okay. And then you can do it a second time and then it doesn't feel as bad. And then you can do it like again, like on a slightly larger scale. So um, unless your issue is things being on fire and then you literally have to sit with the discomfort of something being on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, unless you have a problem with like arson or, you know. <laughs> Which most um, people do. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm going to uh, throw to Robert in a second, but I just want to quickly say like, uh, that was awesome, Rachel, <laughs> like everything you said <laughs> um, and like the stuff about like body awareness and just like self-awareness. Uh, gosh, I'm just going to be on a book recommendation tear today. Um, Tara Brock says we meet our edge and soften, um, which is just exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, like we take action and then we like digest that action and like, only by really digesting and like contemplating what we've just done are we going to be a bit more comfortable and at ease with it. And then Ellen Hendrickson talks about in How to Be Yourself, she says similar to what you said, Rachel, but she goes, the feelings that we have in our body are often much more temporary than the stories that we tell ourselves about those feelings and the like self-talk that we have and the meaning that we assign to this physical experience. Um, and so regarding sitting with discomfort, she goes, if you can just focus on what is going on in your body and just like describe that to yourself, as opposed to being like, oh, well, I'm triggered because of this, because of this memory, because of this person in my life, because of the way that they said this. And then they also said this, when you get into that mindset, it's going to last so much longer and Mm -hmm. it's going to feel even more intense. Right. Um, And the best part about that feeling of discomfort is, I think what you were alluding to, Rachel, like it is temporary just because we feel shitty, like doesn't mean we're always going to feel shitty, even though um, that's how the story goes sometimes in our heads. (laughs) Robert, what does that make you think of? Yeah, I'm glad that Rachel led this because she basically did it the best. (laughs) The only thing (laughs) I had uh, for this, and I hope it's complimentary to it because I think it's very true. There's there's sort of the you know, because you don't want to set boundaries that are immutable and you never have the ability yeah. to change and grow like we, we have to like that's part of the human experience. Um, So I really think it's, in, you know, smart to kind of be comfortable with discomfort. I think that's probably a reason why we all got an improv like part of it is, you know, going out and being uncomfortable. Uh, but becoming comfortable with not knowing what's going on or being in a position you didn't know or taking on a role you didn't know. Uh, Part of it for me that I really discovered was it allowed me to be ugly, which, you know, like I, for the most part, have, you know, I care a lot about my aesthetic and my look. I like fashion and I, you know, like, like to groom myself in that and acting improv especially it was like one day you're going to be a tree one day you're going to be a blob one day you're going to be a beauty you know like and just being a comfortable with kind of like putting yourself into different scenarios and and sitting with the discomfort because you ultimately learn oh actually you're still you're you're still the same person and you've grown as a result of going through that process so the thing that i thought about for this question was like there's a bit of like fear versus pain is that a lot of the boundaries I think are informed by pain or sorry, by fear. And so you're avoiding them because they, they're fearful. And those are probably the ones you want to push a little bit further and try a little bit harder on and find the right parameters as Rachel was sort of talking about was like making sure you're doing it in the right way for you that takes you further. And then pain based ones, I think might be the harder softer slower growing ones where it's like if you've got a trauma around it uh if you've got pain when you go into that that boundary 
then it either means you got to like sort that out and figure out why you still feel pain around it and kind of like you still have something to process or it's maybe just a boundary you need to be a little bit softer on compared to something you're just afraid of um that's, I also yeah. feel like I really want to say that it's also totally okay to have yeah. very hard boundaries on yeah. some things. To be like, this is just a hard nope. Yeah. We <laughs> totally. just we just don't do that. And that I think a lot of people are so afraid of being like so direct and being like, hey, could you do this thing for me? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, thank you for asking. Yeah. But no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Or it's just like, hey, it. would you be willing to try this thing out for me? And being like, no. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think, yeah. and I think kind of like, a, and I, and I think this conversation comes like a lot of mostly in like, you know, sort of relationship or like sexual, um, instigations, but just like, mm, yeah. um, but just this idea of being like, it's okay. If you're just like, I am not into that. I will never be into that. I know that mm. enough about it myself about, or it's just like, tried that once, didn't like it. I am not going back into that place. And I know that about myself mm-hmm. that I am, this is a non-negotiable now. Yeah. And I think a lot of, there's also a lot of fear based around like, what will other people think of me if I'm the person who says no? Um, so I think it's also, we have to like recognize that like, it's okay if there are certain boundaries that you just don't want to cross ever because yeah, for sure. there's something also very validating and cementing in yourself about that to be just like, I have these pillars of myself that these are non-negotiable things for me. Yeah. And that for might be sure. like the pain based ones I was talking about a little bit mm-hmm. is like, if it's so great, like if the like guttural reaction is so deep that you're just like you just have to have it as a straight up no and have it as like a hard boundary because maybe it's just not for you and that's kind of like how we discover our sexual orientation and foods we like and things that we you know activities we enjoy and that you know like you'll never probably see me doing football outside of like the occasional fun game with friends on a beach you know i'm never gonna like hard and fast i'm like no i will never have an interest in becoming a pro sports person not me (laughs) you know yeah yeah i mean along those lines like just as an example um i was on a date with someone and they started doing kind of like deprecating jokes about Mm. me and i was just like no i don't do that i just i won't make jokes about you about anything that you can't change about yourself and i expect the same from me um and like they took it quite well. I was just like, yeah, d- jokes about my appearance, about my age, about like, I don't know, uh, my passions in life. Like if we're making fun of that, gross, bye. Yeah. Like that's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, and David and I haven't gone on a date yeah. since. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it can also um, be like something too. But yeah, for it like, really is that. Yeah. Uh, for work environments as well, I think, especially like as like millennials, you know, mm. that like, it's something that's always been this boundary that's been very fluid. Um, and so it's like also being like a hard nope and being like, no, it's like, I have a hard boundary. It's just like, unless it's like, like this past year, like for COVID, I'm like, I don't work Christmas day. I don't do it. Part of that is because I grew up in a home where one of my parents was always working Christmas day. And it's just like, I think that it's okay to just have like, this day is sacred to me. I don't work it. I will never work it. Don't ask me to work it. And like stuff like, I think, you know, we talk a lot about boundaries in terms of relationships, in terms of with like intimate yeah, partners yeah. and friendships. But I think it's also really important that like you recognize that you can have boundaries in like your workplace environment or like um, especially like in contract work or like when you're doing like acting work, for example, it's just like boundaries can also like come up there and being just like, you know, no, I'm not going to stay until one o'clock in the morning doing this thing for you because I need to sleep or, you know, whatever it is and being like. You know, just being able to say that, like, yes, I'll do this project with you, but I have boundaries in terms of, like, no, you're going to pay me. Yeah. Or it's just, like, I won't accept less than X. Yeah. And I'm also, like, having that confidence in yourself to have that lead over into other facets of your life. Like, it's amazing if you can have it, especially in your intimate relationships, because it's such a vulnerable place to be. But I think it's, like, something if you can practice it in maybe more casual relationships, that'll make it easier to do in your more intimate relationships. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Robert. Robert, the final question Mm. in our chat, what encouragement can we give to people who are struggling to set boundaries? I think there's a great advantage that comes in by setting boundaries, especially like the hard boundaries we were just talking about in certain aspects of life means it gives you more time, bandwidth, and just emotional space to explore maybe the things you don't have boundaries on. And to explore more variety in that and more um, 
interest in that, more time. You can just reinvest that energy into that because if you are boundaryless, right, uh, it's good to push boundaries and grow in that. But if you're boundaryless, then you you like you you'll do anything and everything, and you'll and you'll have no. It's almost like you don't have a sense of yourself. I think in a way, what we're just discussing here is by having boundaries, you you end up defining who you are, right? And mm-hmm. you become without if you become without boundaries and you don't really have a good sense of who you are what you like and what you don't like and that you're just kind of this blank canvas that anyone can fill and it's just like you should be filling your own canvas put that line down yeah <laughs> it's recorded <laughs> it's there to Yay! be listened to forever yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so true yeah boundaries values consent expectations like is all one mm-hmm. kind of multifaceted bubble of like you know how we move through the world as like our individuality uh, clashes with other people's individual individuality mm-hmm. clashes connects whatever however you want to phrase it uh rachel how about you um i would say um for those who struggle to set boundaries um like if you know somebody who's it like if you have an, a friend of yours that is it appears that their boundaries are being crossed quite a bit or you notice that it's like like say something I know that sounds weird, but it's just like, for me, I was in a, a, a relatively toxic relationship and like, I didn't kind of realize how bad things had gotten until a couple of close friends of mine have said it like, are you doing okay? Cause like, mm. you don't seem like yourself or, you know, that's weird that that person didn't do that for you. Mm. And like, like for, when you, when you live in a world where you're rationalizing the, the, the the pulling back of your own personal boundaries over and over and over again, you stop to recognize when like, like base levels of like human connection are even being denied. So I would say like, um, if you're struggling to set boundaries or like, if you feel like there's a relationship that you have with another person that is, um, like giving you pause or question, or you're having feelings about, uh, talk to somebody about it. Or if you know somebody who is appears to be like, struggling with that like talk to them and like, hopefully mm. you have a type of relationship that you can be able to kind of like open that up but just like kind of plant the seed because oftentimes people don't notice that their boundaries have been so pushed until somebody else says how come i never see you at this thing you usually used to really like anymore mm-hmm. or it's, it's funny that like you don't do that anymore yeah. or you know you're so you, deep in been, the forest you don't see it yeah. anymore you don't see the trees. And so it's helpful if you, so yeah, if you, I would say, um, if you, sometimes it's like, or sometimes it's a lot easier to recognize it in another person. And sometimes when you recognize that behavior in somebody else, you can learn to see it in yourself. Right. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say is like, um, also like be, be open to like helping other people recognize when their boundaries are being crossed and like recognizing, learning to kind of like see the signs of like, because sometimes people won't be able to speak up. And so if you're able to sort of like set the precedent as well, being like, these are my boundaries. What are yours? It becomes to invite people to others to be able to start questioning that about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all of that. It's almost like, you know, it really is just supportiveness and like Mm -hmm. accountability um, among friends and all that stuff. Because along those lines, really all I have to add is, If you recognize that a friend or someone close to you, like, enforced a boundary of theirs, like, celebrate that, you know? (laughs) Like, if that's been a conversation and, like, you have the same understanding of that situation, then it's like, oh, my God, like, good for you. (laughs) Because, you know, that's something that you've been, like, denying yourself or something that you've needed for a really long time. And, like, to feel supported in that is super healthy do we have any final thoughts before we move into our game that's beautiful beautiful. (laughs) so we have come now to the fun of the show where we are going to play booth hell with rachel so the way booth hell works is i will be playing random or semi-random sound effects while rachel and robert do a open scene together and they will hopefully justify these sounds Uh, with the context of the scene that they are playing. And I may also jump in and do some improv with them. So to start us off, Rachel, our special guest, what is anything that you could hold in your hand? 
A slice of cheesecake. A slice of cheesecake. Ooh. All right. This is going to be Booth Hell inspired by a slice of cheesecake starting now. I'm so glad we finally got reservations to this place. I have heard nothing but good things. Nothing but good things. Are you kidding me? We are at the lineup of one of the longest lineups I've ever seen. I mean, the brunch here is incredible, Gregory. Incredible. Have you seen their Instagram? Like uh, waffles dipped in matcha and gold leaf. And like they bring out a live goose to lay your eggs and you crack it open and it already has Holland oh, dates inside. Gosh, they have millions of followers and they don't follow anyone. They're that full of themselves. Uh, so um, how did last night go? Oh, it went good. Look what I brought from last night. I just got... Oh. Let me get my bag open. Uh, it's a zipper's a little stuck here. Oh gosh. That's right. It's the VAC 3000. You got one of those? Mm -hmm. I thought they were on back order for at least another three weeks. Well, how do you think I got these tickets to get into this place? The guy I'm sleeping with, he is running this place. Oh. Oh. Sorry, we probably shouldn't be having this conversation in the bathroom, should we? Yeah, you know, just like, you know, I just, I thought, you know, he just wanted to clean out the system to make room for more mimosas. <laughs> <laughs> and the cheesecake at okay. this place. Have you mm -hmm. heard about it? Oh. oh my God. So I heard. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Sorry. So I got a little water on me from washing my hands. The neighbors are so terrible, aren't they? I'm just like, oh my God. They're like, we're just trying to take a shit and have a conversation. Can you just like. <laughs> Keep it and down. they're just over there making nothing but noise. <laughs> Here, no, I totally, it's totally on my phone. Let me just open the app, and it, they totally have the information about this okay. cheesecake. Let me just. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. oh, oh one of the chickens from the kitchen got in here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Get it away. Get it away. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I hope this isn't one of the ones they use. Oh, God. Oh, it's pecking me. It's pecking me. Oh, it's ew, going to your leg. Ew, ew, what do we do? Ew. What do we do? What do, we, I don't, do we peck I don't, back? I don't, do we peck back? Uh, I think I have, like, a taser in here, maybe. Got a taser? Mm -hmm. Yeah, find that taser. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's that asshole I was dating last week. Oh, he's a real walrus. <laughs> hey, you guys, uh, you guys done in this washroom or what? Why are you both in here? We, 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 were, we were just leaving. We, we just yeah. cleaned up. This isn't our chicken. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to leave. Now. <laughs> oh, God, he heard it. Oh, my God. I am so embarrassed. I've never been like. So embarrassed in my entire life. I just, you know, I'm just, I just wanted to have a nice brunch with you. This is the <laughs> brunch of our lifetime, and we're like, your exes are coming back in the scene. I didn't even get to show you all the settings on this. Oh god damn it! There's somebody else in here too. <laughs> wow, they're really. It's really going for it. Maybe oh, we no. should avoid the holidays. <laughs> Do you, want, yeah, you just want to go get some McGriddles? McGriddles? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah okay. I I don't think I could ever show my face in this place again. Okay. McGriddles it is. I'm going to okay. shit myself. It might as well be for a good reason. Right? Ugh. Oh. I'm going to have to bring out the mimosas. <laughs> Can we just... Just one before we go. One before okay. we go. Okay. Ma'am. 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 One, just one mimosa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Can I get an, uh, make that two? Can I just, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah. I happen to have two that were clanking. Thank you. I, I have two plate. hands. You mind if I get another? Uh, yes. There you okay, go. Thank you. Okay. So, so <sighs> each of you have two. How did, wait, where did that fourth samosa come from? Did you... Yeah, I got the samosas and a mimosa. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally, this place has fucking everything. Everything. Samosas, mm. mimosas, cheesecake, well, uh, and Ponderosa, that's the name of that donkey. I'll send you mm. both your bill. God, it's so loud in here. <laughs> Gosh, I know. So Why many mimosas. Put ice into the glasses. Mm. Mm. God, look at that view. Mm. Do you see that streetscape? It's always just so active. 
right by the ocean. Mm. They're fighting over a bag of french fries as we speak. Oh, gosh. Maybe it's not as bad as we thought. Yeah, I think we can recover. Oh, yeah. God, it it really is going for that bag of chips, eh? Yeah. It's, it's, really... it's got oh, his whole head in there. Yeah. Got that poor baby. It's, it's oh, trying to God. steal it from that baby. It's trying to take the chips from that baby. It's letting me in his fresh. Oh, God. God, Let why is fries. it? It's carrying away the baby. It's carrying away the baby. Oh, oh God. God. The baby. Oh, God. Oh God, it's strong. Yeah, that is a very buff seagull. I think it's an albatross. Mm. Do those even grow here? Do they grow? <laughs> or are they I'm sorry. burst? I'm two mimosas in. You and are mimosa. such a fucking drunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me just throw Cheers. my glass away. All right, uh, folks, uh, here's your bill. Um, if there's anything else you need, let me know. Do you need a machine? Uh, yes. Yeah, machine would be machine would be yeah, great. Super, Please. here you tap, go. Please, I Wait. only tap now. Oh shit! Sorry, my vacuum turned on. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't. Here, let me just let me just Wait, get your, it. your vacuum. Your vacuum took the machine. Oh, oh. How, how oh, do God, you the machine? Oh. We just had one machine. Um. Oh my God. Pull on it. Uh, 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 are, you are we all pulling? <laughs> yes, this is a group effort. This is a VAC 3000. I told you it, it loses no section. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, did anybody, did we get the machine? Did we get the I debit card so. reader? I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it. Oh God. Quick, oh. Jeffrey, run. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, oh. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it there. <laughs> Good shit. I even ran, um, so the like footsteps will be like a natural sound. For ah, natural footsteps. Incredible. I will. So high tech. Uh, I have no thought. <laughs> My brain just froze. <laughs> Buffering. Right. Wow. Wow. That flew by. It's already been fifty-two minutes. Um, let's uh, wrap it up. Mm. That brings us to the end of today's show. Rachel, do you have anything that you want to take away from this conversation? Uh, I want to take away the like 87 book recommendations you made. Yeah. Uh, so please slide that. Please put that uh, list of books you referenced in the comment section below. And For ring sure. that bell to make sure you're notified every time we post a new episode. Ring <laughs> the bell. The ring my bell. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited. Yeah, that's one we're of our playing games. that in the next episode. That's one of our games. <laughs> we do welcome to my channel. It's like one of our favorites. Um, what am I taking away from this conversation? Um, <laughs> I am taking away that uh, my therapist has been so proud of me that I've actually been paying attention to all this talk that we've been having about boundaries the last mm. year. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, and I'm taking away that... Um, that, yeah, sitting in the discomfort, mm. just sitting in the discomfort of like that being uncomfortable is okay. And that it's okay to know the difference between feeling uncomfortable and feeling unsafe. Mm. Mm. <sighs> nice. Yeah. How about you, Robert? Uh, pretty much everything Rachel brought today <laughs> is so much good, like <laughs> tidbits. Uh, but my <laughs> highlight would probably be around sort of like parameter based boundaries of like using that to determine like, when you're going to push yourself, do it in a way that feels right for you. And if those parameters straight up mean a hard no, then that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. That's similar to my takeaway as well is like, it never hurts to revisit our values, revisit the things that we say yes to the things that really fill us up because oftentimes we can get hyper focused on boundaries and just be looking for like the things that make us uncomfortable and just try to avoid being uncomfortable as opposed to looking for the stuff that's actually like filling us up and making us feel good. Um, cause you just, you need both. It's the yin and the yang. Um, yeah. it's like, yeah, knowing our yeses and our nos. I just, I say it all the time, but it's so like universal. Um, thanks again, Rachel. You can follow her at Rach Kent on Instagram and definitely make sure to look up that show the Neverland Peter Pan Circus Show. The Neverland Night Circus. <laughs> Neverland Night Circus, put on by the Geek Enders. Um, look for Captain Hook. Look for Captain Hook. 
Just in general, <laughs> just rules yeah, to live by. In life. <laughs> I mean, as a, uh, as a bisexual, again, pirates are like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like put anything, buddy, in anything that could be related to swashbuckling, and mm, I'm like, mm, mm. yeah, mm. yeah, mm. pirate shirts, <laughs> yes, yeah, flowy pirate shirt, regardless of your gender expression, just put it in a pirate outfit. Mm. Oh yeah, oh my god, yeah. flowy clothing. Why is oh, flowy god. clothing so like? <laughs> It's like Appealing. flowy clothing constricted by like brocade vests. <laughs> Hello, brocade. Mm. Brocade, I guess I'm saying it brocade. <laughs> I don't know. I like so it that pretentious. way. So pretentious. It's called. <laughs> Is this um, jackered? Ooh. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. You can follow BitButton uh, as well. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And like Rachel said, make sure to turn on the notifications. Said that with a weird lisp. Make sure to turn on notifications. Uh, finally, if you really love the show, you can always support it at patreon.com slash BitButton. Stay wet, internet. Oh, man, you did it again. That's what you get. Oh, it's, That's the it's, ASMR that I did not sign yeah, up for. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Rhubarb. <laughs> Rhubarb <laughs> crust of No, just kidding. Just kidding. It's funny.